gon' burn it down. We gon' burn it down. Breaking into and working in the modeling industry can be extremely difficult work. The constant pressures related to models' looks and lifestyles are overwhelming in many cases. The business is highly competitive and getting noticed often requires a great deal of resources, both monetary and personal. While beauty can be defined differently, there is a side of beauty that is often left out and Mary Mukami, the co-founder of Rare Beauty Movement, is out to change the view of beauty while she explores beauty from different communities and encourages self-love and self-worth. We started it last year at around June. We met with Saud at a, a UN event. I'm an events organizer, so I organize a lot of events, and that's where we met with Sauda. And it was a persons with disability events, and we got to do a lot of activities that involved um, sort of like the world of persons with disability. And for me, that really touched me, and I felt like this should um, reach out to the world. So uh, Sauda and I partnered and we started um, the movement and our aim was to impact the beauty and the fashion industry. Our main goal is to make sure that the um, persons with disability are embraced in the entertainment, in the events and in the advertisement industry because most of the times when you go to fashion events you'll never see like a person with disability yet they wear clothes and shoes you know and they attend events and most of the events are not persons with disability friendly like you'll not find someone who can um, you know, like the, the, there are no ramps, there are no people to help out and everything, which is very sad, yet they are, very, they are a majority in our country and in the world. So for me, I wanted to change that norm and have events that are basically majority for persons with disability. If it's the runway, it's just for persons with disability to showcase the products, to showcase their beauty, and you know, just to change that realm of beauty and everything. The rare beauty models are differently abled models ranging from persons with dwarfism, vitiligo, and many other forms of disability. For us, our target is um, persons with albinism, persons with vitiligo, uh, dwarfism, and um, basically just persons with disability, mostly ladies, that's uh, who we are dealing with for now. Uh, basically because, especially for ladies, we have a lot of judgment out there. You know, there's always judgment of, can you do this, can you do that, can you talk like this? So for me, I felt like they are not really appreciated well, in my view. And if you look at some of the ladies that we have, they are extremely talented, they are very beautiful. We have ladies who work um, in banks, they, they play basketball, they do swimming, and they do like competition. They are, they are picked by very big advertisement um, companies and most of, uh, now you see these are just one, one people, so we want the whole community to be embraced and this to be the new norm, so that when you see a person with albinism, you're not staring and wondering, what, how is she like that, you know, it's, it should be the norm, like this, the, we are all one people, we are all one color, so there shouldn't be that uh, separation of, oh, you have vitiligo, why, and you know, because most of the times when we, all, we even share stories on our pages, we've shared stories about the journey of our ladies and most of them really have very heartbreaking stories like someone will just meet you up and be like what is wrong with your skin and you're like okay i really can't explain it you know so we want that to that stigma to end and have them being embraced everywhere in the world in order to recruit models to her movement mary uses social media as a platform to make her cause known to the public we advertise and we also um, go to like there are special schools as well so we go and we do auditions and we also have like 
people introduce their friends. So if you know a friend, you know a friend, we come, we do auditions for them. As long as you're between um, around 20 to 30 there, because that's when you have some free time to do the activities that we have, because we have quite a number of activities. So we just want someone who's able to be proactive. Once recruited, the models go through various trainings, such as confidence building, skills equipping, and so on. We actually do train them, but our training is a bit different. So our training is on skills. We train on skills, we train on confidence building, we train on um, how to to handle yourself in front of people when you go to companies how are you going to you know carry out yourself so this is basically how we train them because we can't train them on walking or, or you know the runway um, normal thing so what we do we just train them on the conf confidence building and how they're going to um, approach companies out there as they're looking for for jobs and advertisements and all that mostly the trainers are uh, persons that they're also persons with disability as well and Sauda is also one of them uh, my partner she's a very good trainer she's been uh, in the fashion industry she's been in the modeling industry she's actually done a, a couple of advertisements which are on billboards so she's very qualified for training uh, to our models some of the activities that the models indulge in include mostly we do concentrate on events like uh, the recent one that we had for Valentine's. So we do such events where we just uh, have our models go through the runway, we invite speakers, we invite the speakers and we also have them showcase their talent. So basically that's those are the activities that we have and we also have um, advertising them advertising products. So we'd go to a company and then they'd give us the products that they have and then we'd have our models advertise those uh, products. So when you look at our page, we have uh, a variety of the products that they've been advertising. So what we do, we get uh, your talent. So what talent do you have? If you your talent is to make jewelry, the beaded uh, jewelries, that's what you make and then we advertise uh, on our page and we in every event we get you to advertise your products so people are able to buy and that's how you're able to build your career path uh, if you're good at dj we have a dj in the team uh, we get you a dj who's like a professional dj and then they work with you that journey so you're able to learn this is how you do it this is how you get people to attend your events like that uh, if you're good at uh, tailoring, like making clothes, you design your clothes and then in one of the runways, the models wear your clothes. So it's part of the mentioning and that's how you advertise your clothes. Passion and motivation are key to one's goal as Maria tests. I'd firstly want to thank God for uh, creating me and giving me that life and giving me that passion to have service for humanity because if it wasn't a thing that I was born with I'd struggle you know sometimes you see people uh, do things for the camera just so that they can be seen they have done something so I thank God that it's something that it's which is in me I also thank my parents who have really taken me through that journey my especially my mom my mom is a giver like she just give give and give and give so i think for me i've really learned a lot from her to give and be kind to people the girls that we interact with are very very kind-hearted people and they are people who we have the same goal service to human humanity sorry and you'd find me out there planting trees, taking care of animals, you know, doing volunteer work. That's something that I really love. So I also got people who they have the same goal and that's how we push each other because there's nothing as bad as you having this goal and the people that you're with having a very different goal. You will not go on the same path. So because the, the people that we have in the, the members have the same goal, it's very easy for us to push each other, to strengthen each other and to just move forward.
Beauty, they say, is in the eyes of the beholder, but personal beauty that comes from within is a greater recommendation than any letter of reference. From my perspective, beauty is inner. You know, sometimes we look at the outer and basically we just judge a book by its cover. But for me, I find that there's so much to beauty than just what you see. There is how you interact with someone, how that person is there. Are they kind to you? Are they nice to you? How, what are their thoughts about so much? Are they impacting the community? That to me is what is beauty. Since individuals, businesses and government entities all need funding to operate, how does she acquire hers? As of now, we are partnering with different organizations. It's actually because of the corona that things have, re have laid down, but we had partnered with at, uh, different organizations. So for every um, activity that is done, if it's advertising a product or uh, run the runway, we pay them. So we pay them, that's one, and two, we get the mentors. So each and every person has a mentor to take them through the journey of the um, industry they are in. Definitely, for especially for events, we do have sponsors who come in and uh, they just sponsor the event. Yeah, basically that's, and partners as well. Mostly organizations for persons with disability or organizations who have products for persons with disability. Most of the times actually we have uh, um, like tailors who specifically tailor make clothes for persons with disability. Yeah, so those, they sponsor us. They just sponsor us so that they can advertise their clothes. And makeup, we have special makeup, like, but we have brands that have very good uh, makeup for persons with albinism and vitiligo, so they also sponsor us. And also, um, um, like shoes, we also have shoes for um, persons with disability and stylish ones, you know. Mary finds great satisfaction in what she does, especially when she sees her models live a successful life. One, I'll start with um, when they attend events, most people are usually shocked because they usually come with a mentality of, oh, yeah, you know, what, will, what can we do, what do we... But when they come, they see a different type of people, people who are confident, beautiful, who are dressing up, who are very dependent. So they, that's sort of shaping their view on persons with disability and, you know, just introducing like a, a different perspective because they get to interact so you get most people are very ignorant and they don't interact with persons with disability so which makes them just judge people so when they come to our events they just get to see a very very different view of people and that's what we are bringing to the table we have maureen um maureen awino she's a member of rare beauty and she's also a person with a disability she's a very proud mom now her story has been very deep. She used to consume drugs. She actually never liked herself and attempted suicide a couple of times. And it, it was a very, very hurting story because most of it was because of her surrounding. Most people didn't talk to her or didn't like her or treated her different. And for her, she just felt like the world does not have any meaning. So in terms of when we we and her clicked we were able to give her that self-confidence we worked with her that journey we helped her to change her life she's now a different person she has confidence she can be able to approach a company and that's how she landed her job because she never was confident yet she has studied but she never thought that she'd be picked one because of her previous job she had a job where People in the organization never treated her well. They never liked her. They were never good to her. And so she felt like, I can't even you know, get a good job for myself. And she was actually laid down because they thought she was limiting. But then we encouraged her. We boost her confidence when we were able to help her reach out to a better job. And right now she's doing so well. She's a proud mom. She has a stable job. And she's actually enjoying her life. Just what are some of our greatest achievements? Uh, one of our achievements was being able to hold fashion events. 
I think for us that has been a very very big achievement because and even having people attend because most of the times fashion the fashion industry is usually looked at as you know this high tech high class and this world of you know different people so we really came in and changed that perspective because we were able to host a couple of fashion events and have sponsors have partners and have people attend the event so for us that has been really like a big thing for us like a really step forward yeah and then also the number the number of partners that we've acquired and the number of um in terms of partners our girls have been able to get uh, advertisement jobs you know with our movement so to us that's a really big thing the sale is not always smooth as mary suggests mostly i'd say um access to um, like different places because most of the times when we are going to to do fashion shoots or just shoots we'd get the the places are not accessible so there's one time we went to this building and the partner wasn't sensitive enough to know that the the building doesn't have ramps so it was very sad because we didn't do we, we ended up not doing the the event i mean the shoot because they couldn't some of our members couldn't go into the building some the places were too small i mean it was just it wasn't a good thing so for us that was that's usually our big challenge like to find buildings that are accessible and also to uh i'd say maybe like to have people not stare so much sometimes when we are out there doing photo shoots people are like what well, you know like it's just like sort of like a very crazy thing you're doing you know yeah it, it becomes very strange like oh my god people People exist you know it's just so that to us has been a really really crazy challenge so yeah I think that and also um, I'd also say that confidence has also been a very big challenge like some of the members are still not yet confident and we still are really trying to build that confidence Mary who is also an, an environmentalist and events planner believes in service to humanity and also participates in charity work. She shares with us some of the activities that she does in her free time. Love for nature uh, started when I was young. I'd really go out and plant flowers even if they were not real and just go and poke a flower. So I felt like I grew up loving nature loving animals i am obsessed with taking care of animals i'm that one person who i can't watch nat geo because i see one lion eating a, a cub or something and i'm just crying so for me i really really take care of the environment when i go out and i find someone has thrown something i definitely be the one to pick and you know go through it so i i really want to encourage people to take care of the environment because if we don't then who will live in it you know and we have our children our children and children who we want to live in this world so and also service and uh, service for humanity I think for me that has also been a passion and I find myself mostly like the weekends I go to children children's homes and uh, homes for elderly people and help out as much as I can if it's cooking cleaning doing anything that I can I really just love helping out I I can't help it I, I love really helping out and for me that's something that is in me and which I'd want to share with so many people I'd want to reach out to people to help them be able to understand that we should take care of each other, we should take care of our environment, and that we were actually created. I'm a Christian, so we were created to take care of our environment. So to me, that has been something that in Bonn. There's an organization called Me Forest, which I was working with, and their sole purpose is just to plant trees all over Kenya. And they do plant whether people know or they don't, or people don't know, people are finding out or not they just plant trees so and their um, their goal is to make sure that they are able to at least attain the 10% uh, tree cover so 
from me being part of that organization, I've really, really learned to do stuff whether people are watching or not. Her greatest desire is to find more sponsors to support her great initiative. When asked what the future looks like, this is what she has to say. We are really looking forward to have um, one of the biggest fashion shows in Kenya for purely persons with disability. That is our main goal. <laughs> so we are doing small, small events just to see how it goes, to see how people are, are embracing it. And then boom, we just have this very, very big fashion event with all the sponsors, the big, big sponsors. And we have, you know, our target is a thousand people to attend. And we really look forward to that. So we are in plans of that. We are doing as much training as possible, as much sourcing for sponsors as possible, because we really want to impact and change the norm with, you know, the events uh, industry. You can't change the direction of the wind, but you can always adjust yourselves to reach a destination. Let the world know that we should really strive to be there for each other especially like just a time like this you can imagine most people are staying at home by themselves so they are sad and we should really reach out to as many people as possible and when you have that heart of reaching out helping you'll find yourself not seeing color or difference or status or anything, everyone will be equal in your eyes and you'll be able to, you know, to embrace everyone.